What's going on guys, it's your boy Nistro here and welcome to my first place OTS Rescue Ace deck profile. I've been playing the same list for about two weeks now. Played it through multiple events. I got like a top eight last week. I went to the regionals last weekend uh, in Queens, New York City. I went like 4-1-4, so I could have played better. There were some matchups where I was kind of struggling and I got first place at locals during this week. So I just want to share my progress with Rescue Ace and where I've come with the deck and some of my decisions. We're just going to get into the profile real quick. My rescue ace numbers are pretty standard. Three airlifter, three hydrant, triple emergency, uh, double turbulence, double preventer. And now where I start sort of start to deviate from everyone else is that I'm still on fire engine and I'm and I'm on two impulse. Some people are starting to cut these. And personally, I love being able to use fire engine and build up my board on turn zero so that once I get to play, like I get to like get immediate access into like link summons and SP Little Knight before the actual engine starts coming down. There's actually a good replacement for fire engine. So it's not good into every matchup because if you're playing against a, against a deck, like let's say Unchained, where they can use the fact that you have summoned monsters during their turn to their advantage. There are certain matchups where you kind of don't want to play it. If you know your opponent's on super poly, you, you may want to side out the fire engine because it, it, it's like super poly bait, it plays right into it. And we kind of got to be careful against which matchup that you play Fire Engine in, but there's a really good replacement for it in the side deck that we're going to go into later, but it's it's a pretty cool card. And the last of the Rescue Ace engine is, I play one of each other than Reinforce. I do think Reinforce might have some space in Rescue Ace list now that Fire Kings are out, because I think it's a really good uh, call against Fire King, but for, for right now, I think this is good. I wouldn't play Reinforce in the main, I would side it anyway. So I, I kind of like these ratios and, you know, being able to recycle because we are playing the wanted engine. Sometimes you have like more than one way into hydrant. And so using airlifter to search something like alert or rescue to like play around more things so that you get to activate both in the same turn instead of just one like you normally do is actually really good. It actually really comes up and HQ being able to recycle sometimes that just snow snowballs you the game in like a grind game. And don't forget emergency emergency can reset your traps from the graveyard like that is generally gotten me a lot of games where because I'm resetting my traps and then shuffling back like now I could shuffle back more of like my preventers. This deck kind of like requires you to know how to use your engine to your advantage and it, it's very easy to screw up with this deck. So one package we play one snake eye triple wanted and a single diabell star i'm not on more diabell star because i don't care about this thing hitting the grave if they want to banish this to stop like wanted from getting me a card i really don't care by the time this has hit the graveyard it's already fulfilled its purpose it's already gotten me into the rescue side of the deck i don't need diabell star to resolve original sinful spell so if i draw this Diabell Star kind of isn't necessary at that point. She's just another extender. Maybe if I was playing Celine, I would care, but Celine isn't in my extra deck. What was happening to me was I wasn't losing my combo matchups. Like I wasn't losing against like Manadium or like Unchained Vanquish Soul. Well, I, I wouldn't consider Vanquish Soul combo. I wasn't losing against like Branded. I didn't lose against like Red Dragon Archfiend. I lost against the, the like control matchups, like the matchups like Labyrinth and Pearly. Maybe it might be worth playing the uh, Sinful Spoils trap card against those matchups uh, if I wanted to bump up the number of Diabell Star so that I have another Sinful Spoils card uh, target in deck to like grab in case I already have Airlifter or, or Rota or Emergency then it could be like double as useful to get like um, something off of Dia Bellstar that, that can actually like continue to oppress my opponent. That's something I was considering. So I guess this is technically part of the wanted package for me, like the way that I'm playing it, because I'm playing these two in main because I wanted something that like was versatile for going first and for going second. That's why I'm not on enemy controller because I don't think enemy controller is good for going first. And this really helps me break boards going second. Another thing about this going first is that it mixes really well with like the wanted it package um as long as you don't hard play into droll you should be all right because the fenrir that you search you can drop to summon dia star and then you can you know get dia star from there and then like fenrir kind of like makes up for itself and by playing it at two it's like you're less likely to brick on it like you're less likely to draw multiples when i see it it's cool when i don't i don't it doesn't help into like every matchup but like because there's a lot of cards that like can't be targeted now and stuff so it's not always the best sometimes skipping your battle phase is worth it we're not on zeus and uh, evenly isn't in the main deck. So I don't mind skipping my battle phase to get rid of like one card or to play through a single interruption because sometimes it's worth it. Consistency, double pot, one rota. 
I like pot at two because it's an easy pivot card. Like it helps you dig into your side going second and going first. It can help you get a starter if you don't draw like some of your engine. I don't think you need to play this at three. Bricking on this card is kind of tough because there's too much conflict mid to late game where you'd rather prioritize getting the shuffle back off of HQ than resolving a prosperity because, you know, if you want to get into like your turbulence to, to reset and stuff. So that's why I can't in good conscience play this at three. There are even times where, where I side prosperity out. When I side in talent, sometimes I, I take one one copy out. Otherwise, I don't mind two prosperity. I don't mind seeing it some of the time, but not all the time because it's a really good card to like dig into deck. I don't mind if it gets like semi-limited or even limited because it's not gonna affect how I play the deck. We're at 43 cards right now. So if prosperity gets hit, it kind of is what it is. Now for protection, I'm playing Book of Moon called by an instant. First off, I don't know who's not playing called by. I saw Steven, the, the, the YCS champ from Richmond or whichever YCS that was where, where he got first place. I don't think he was on called by the grave. I just personally don't understand it. Like there's so much shit that you stop a call by the grave, like not just during your turn, but during your opponent's turn as well, in case you draw this going second, especially in a format where we're going up against like Bistials and all kinds of kookly shit. Like you never know what matchup you're going into. I think call by the grave is like a, just a good generic card. Instant fusion, our instant fusion target is Mud Dragon, So we're not playing like proxy F or anything. We're also not on super poly. I just wanted a card in main, like another card that can protect me from Imperm and effect failure on my turbulence. And I think instant fusion is great. If I mix instant fusion because mud dragon's a fusion, you know, like the second that you don't need it anymore, you can link it off into a SP and then SP will get its effect because you use the fusion to make it. Book of Moon, I think is a little more interesting because it's like this card really does so much. I don't want to play Book of Eclipse because I feel like I don't want my opponent to potentially plus if I can't clear their field. I also don't want to get ashed on my out. If they want to imperm me and I book and then they have like an ash blossom, on the eclipse it's like i just lose the interaction there are there are times where that could literally cost me the game i don't want to lose to a potential ash blossom or something on my book of eclipse or on my board breaker this is not the best board breaker right because going into certain boards it really depends on the matchup so against like manadium if they try to crimson dragon you you can use this to target the monster that they target with crimson against unchain you can target the wave king caesar to get rid of it unchain you usually does not have an answer for this they kind of don't expect this card on their wave king you'll be trading one for two right and it helps you dodge imperm like i can't tell you how much this card carries the deck i don't want to play less than three copies in game one maybe in game two and three depending on the matchup if i'm playing a more like back row heavy deck then i'll maybe side one or two of these out but um i may go for the imperm instead but that's kind of like why i felt so confident playing book of moon is because i was like wait so this not just protects me from hand traps, but it also helps me in like combo matchups if they try to calamity lock me. Cause that's what I was most scared of. I was scared of like not being able to play the game like at all. And so I just wanted to have a card that could deal with shit, not just during my turn, but during my opponent's. Book of Moon is like the living example of that Bruce Lee quote, like don't fear the person who's practiced 10,000 different kicks, fear the person who's practiced the same kick 10,000 times. There's so many applications where you could use Book of Moon properly going first and second. And that's the only reason why I'm playing this over Econ because Econ, I really can't use econ going first going second this going first or second book of moon helps me so much so that's why i'm keeping it in the main deck the hand traps right our triple imperm triple ash the single copy of ghost mortar because ghost mortar is a kind of like cool random one of if you open it like it's just another interruption you kind of already are playing more like two more hand traps right you're you're already on two impulse i wanted to reduce the number of impulse because it wasn't necessary in every situation the impulse is kind of sometimes you want to see it sometimes you don't need it i just need like another card to like make up for that one slot and i want to have something a little more random it doesn't lose to like shifter dot deck and it's another card to help me win in time potentially because uh if my opponent plays into it then i can inflict a significant amount of damage to them without really having to play the game so for extra we're on the terahertz package terahertz is like the name of the game when it comes to going first because when you terahertz it's very hard to lose once you resolve this card i think getting the spell trap negate is like one of the most important things out of everything you have a one card combo into set four plus spell and trap negation plus another trigger effect negation so that means it's essentially like a one card for the five interruptions off of one card combo i don't know why people wouldn't want to play it other than you just want to play more hand traps and as a code talker player being able to play like a cyber slink climb in in a modern deck like best thing i could ask for i'm playing the smaller package for the terahertz combo because 
because it's actually easier to pivot between things with these two because there's more that you can go into when you use these two compared to the firewall package. It's less set up and it's less likely that you'll mess up the combo because there's more than one way to make terahertz using this way. If you accidentally mess up one of these two, you can make something like an IP Mascarina because it's still Cybers and then it's like 221 still, so you still get the play. Um, there's even another play in time that I get to go into using G Golem, Chris Hart, and Binary where uh, I'll show you guys the, the tech at the end of the extra deck. I hear some people talk about like the other Cybers package and they talk about how it's only like one extra slot that you get when you play the smaller package. Correction, it's actually two extra slots because you need four, these four cards on top of the terahertz, the link Karibo, plus the two disruptions to make terahertz work in the extended combo. And the only benefit is that you get to potentially add back one of your turbulence or preventers or whatever from your grave back to your hand using firewalls effect is cool that you get a little follow-up but i just like being able to pivot with these two a lot better it's also like easier to make this like going second it's easier to make the g golem chris heart and the binary sorceress because like it, it takes less cards uh, you don't need to you have more versatility in how you can start getting into those cards compared to with the more rigid combo going second these kind of just suck you, you could still go into access code, but it won't be as saucy. There's a lot of times I went into binary sorceress with G Golem Crystal Heart. I set it up so that I used a Crystal Heart plus one more monster to make Nightmare Unicorn code link to binary sorceress. And now I'm digging a little deeper into my deck and I'm removing cards along the way. And then I go into access code. So it's actually really good. With the extra space that you have in your extra deck now, like you can play so many more things that can deal with like fringe situations. I just personally don't think I'd ever go back to playing like the, the extended version of the combo personally. Because you effectively end on the same thing. It, it all uses one card and it's cool that the extended combo gets you the one card back. But so does going into like, like you play wanted and you get to draw a card off of that, you know, start your combo that way. So you really don't need that one card. So Heat Soul is kind of necessary because it's like what you get if you brick, then you end on Heat Soul. And bricking means only having access to a to a normal summon hydrant, right? If you special summon hydrant, then you're good. But if you normal summon hydrant, the best thing you can make is heat soul. You can still go for crystal heart plus binary. If you have just hydrant going second, that still means access code. A cool card. I don't think it's like cuttable at the moment. I do like it because it's still useful. Even if, even if you get the full combo, turn one, you're milling D save worm, right? Turn two, you're milling mirror logic, like just whether you use it or not, right? Just mill this during end phase. And then turn three, you can mill Heat Soul, and then now Terahertz goes up to 10,000 attack. If they couldn't play through the disruptions like the set five, then Terahertz is just going to OTK them. You can attack two monsters because now this is a different um, attribute as well. It can also just attack directly. There's one time I played against Branded Chimera. I went first. His only play was Normal Summon Springin's Kit, hoping he could pull the Branded Fusion. I let him get the Branded Fusion, then I ashed him on it, and he kind of had no other play. He just sat there as I swung into his Springin's Kit and... There was just nothing that he could do about it. Terahertz is great. I really don't mind getting nib. Like I always play into nib with this uh, strategy because again, you're only using one card to make all this. As long as like Turbulence resolves with the set four before the Nibiru, you're good because you still get to play the game. They've used one card to deal with one problematic card, which is Terahertz. They still have to play through all your back row, assuming that they didn't open any board breakers like Lightning or Evenly, because if they open Nib, that means they didn't open the back row removal, unless it's Harpy's Fetter Duster. And so that's kind of like the trade-off, right? If, if they open Nib, it's less likely that they'll have other things to stop you. And you also have four other cards in your hand to potentially deal with any other situations. I don't think you're in a bad spot if you get in a beard on, on a one card combo. Now, if it's like a two card combo, maybe and like if you have to start with like wanted poster, then maybe it's not that great. But if you start with like the one card airlifter, then I don't think it's that big of a deal if you get nipped, at least going first, going second, that's like, that's going to stall the game out for a bit because now it's like, you can't even OTK them. So that's going to stall like rescue is going second is really hard. It's harder to like be aggressive because you, you, you still have to get to Turbulence. Unless you can get into Axis Code plus Turbulence, you kind of just got to pass turn. It's harder to deal with what your opponent's doing. If you know that you can't OTK them, then you go into SP Loto Knight, but it's tougher going second, playing around Nib, but going first, just play into the Nib. It's really not that big of a deal. We got IP and Friends. I was going to play a second SP Loto Knight, but after doing some testing, I realized like, holy shit, I actually can't swing for game if I go for SP, especially when you go Terahertz turn one and then turn three, 
like you make some like SP low knight, you're only hurting yourself because you you can probably already clear the board anyway. Like you don't need to go for SP. You can just go into something like unicorn and it'll be like the same difference. So that's why I'm playing the unicorn over the second SP because I feel like going into battle phase is still important. You can get the bodies to to make unicorn without it hurting your bottom line too much and probably you can probably still swing for game i don't think two sp is necessary like maybe if i was on like infernoble and i can make like sp going first and sp going third turn that would be great but also sometimes if you don't draw the book or if you don't draw certain other cards and you, and you just have like two monsters uh before you go into turbulence you can make sp to dodge imperm or to dodge nibiru it also helps playing around evenly if you don't feel like any on heat soul you can end on sp it's kind of like the same difference so, you know, it, it gives you like the options, right? Like ending on SP is not like the worst thing in the world because it gives you the, the ability to like pivot. Our bigger links, right? Uh, because we have space, I, I'm playing Underworld. It's because she allows you to break break through boards that like have those monsters that can't be targeted and, and, you know, stuff like that. And that's kind of like another thing I kind of feared most. I didn't want to end up in a situation where I can't swing over something and it's unaffected, can't be targeted and all that nonsense so i can't use the traps on it so that's why i want to just have underworld goddess just just in case to make sure that i could still play through those things and it's come up a lot of times like especially going second like as i was mentioning with uh, fire engine you get those bodies on board you go into something like a ip or like a sp you break something down then you quad link using their monster into your underworld goddess and honestly underworld goddess is crazy because she actually does like four different things she doesn't just swallow a monster on when she's linked summon she she gets to negate all face of monsters your opponent controls and then she's unaffected by card effects unless they target her does come up sometimes if they activate a card or effect that like would summon from grave you can also negate it so that's four things that this card does most cards only do three things the fact that she does like four really significant things because thanks to her summoning condition is crazy against scareclaw against manadium underworld goddess puts in work i don't think ip is cuttable keep her in because there's just too many times where it's easy to just sit on her if you don't feel like making sp let's say you have protector card for turbulence already and you don't feel like going to the heat soul ip mascarena is is another good card you can end on so you can pivot between little knight and like nightmare unicorn during your opponent's turn <clears throat> mud dragon for our instant fusion target typhon puts in so much work against like combo decks like against manadium and even like bestial synchro it helped me there play so much going first and then like going second you go into the turbulence you set your four then you go typhon bounce something attack into something and then you kind of just get to keep playing the game typhon's a really good card for like the balance of the game at the moment and it's really hard to theory this card like you kind of just got to like play it right like you got to play it out against like different boards and see how you like it and oftentimes it 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 does you know carry its weight so i i i think Ky typhon should be in like every list <laughs> in the game honestly like i can't think of a th uh, of a deck that like shouldn't use Typhon. And that's only 14 cards, right? So our real extra deck is only 14 cards because our 15th card is for time. Gigantic Sprite is only here for time, right? So that's what I was mentioning with the Crystal Heart and the Binary Sources earlier, because these don't lock you into, into something Cybers only. Going into these uh, to go into Gigantic Sprite is another play that you can do that also only takes one card and then it ends on a really cool one of that you have in your side called a uh, red resonator because gigantic sprite is going to have a link monster as material it's going to be 3200 so you summon red resonator from deck target gigantic and you're going to gain 3200 life points and uh that has won me so many games in time i wanted to have a cool play in time that i could do off of just the one card and it's helped me so much so uh, time rules are stupid but you you, you kind of just gotta get used to it if your deck doesn't have a play in time i'm i'm sorry like it's less likely that you might win and especially when i lose die roll the games that i lose die roll tend to be the longest games that i ever played i don't lose every time so i'm not gonna auto scoop i'm not like on like infernoble going second where sometimes you just auto scoop i'm gonna play it out sometimes there's a lot of times where if you have like less than 10 minutes left in a round and you know that you're going first or even if or even if you're going second if, if it's like around like seven to eight minutes and you know you're going second you still side in the red resonator just in case now gigantic sprite only summons from deck so if you hard open red resonator which hasn't happened to me yet thankfully despite the number of times i've sided it in you know benefits of playing 43 cards then there is a it's it's like a two or three card combo to pull to, to pull it off and assuming they don't have any interruptions for you going first 
you could still pull it off because you just have to go into Nightmare Unicorn, shuffle this back into deck, and then go into two Link Twos to go into Gigantic Sprite. It really depends on what the situation is, but like you might be able to still play the Red Resonator from hand. It's really helped me out a lot, and I don't think I would ever cut this little combo that I got here. Maybe once Promethean Princess comes out in Phantom Nightmare, opening Red Resonator won't be a big deal because you could just link it off and then summon it back from Grave because because it's a fire. So I think Red Resonator is the best card to keep inside for time. Going into side deck, we have our double tactics. Only one of each because I feel like uh, the, the deck is already good enough at playing around hand traps that like I don't need to max out on these. Thrust is really just here for our board breaker targets. So for going second, like most of my side is dedicated to going second because we have such a dominating turn one that I don't feel like siding turn one cards in is necessary. Most of the stuff that I play for side is, is for going second. I've yet to resolve Herald of the Abyss. I'm still like unsure on like how well I do against Pearly. Like it's kind of like 50-50. If they go second, it's hard to beat them. If they resolve the field spell, but like if I go second, sometimes it's like I can still get the game assuming their end board isn't that strong. Triple Droplet. Again, I just wanted to have more stuff to stop like Calamity Lock and quote unquote FTKs, turn skipping cards. So I just want to have Droplet. It plays well into a lot of stuff. And then mixing it with HQ or whatever, it, it, you're probably going to win if Droplet and resolves. It really helped against Vanquish Soul. Like once they've extended all their level five or higher's in hand and you know everything that they have, Dropletting their next is three Nibiru. Honestly, like Nibiru is a really great card, but it just has not been putting in work. I really prefer cards or hand traps that I can draw six card, right? That's why I like Imperm. Ash is a decent six card because you can use it to stop the welcome labyrinths and stuff. Um, there, There's a lot of stuff that summons from deck during your turn. So it's not like Ash six card is like the worst thing in the world. Nibiru six card is most times it, it just sits in your hand and that's why I, I didn't feel like playing it in main. I didn't want a card that like would hurt me going second, assuming I didn't open it in my in my opening hand. I like to keep Nibiru in the side deck only for like decks that I feel just do way too much. I haven't really sided in three copies at any point. I've only sided in like one or two. I'm like, well, maybe just in case. Like if I open it, I'll use it. Like, and that's that's the reason why I play a lot of one ofs. I don't like breaking on multiples of things. I'd rather just have like a bunch of different cards I can use and like kind of play more skillfully than rather rely on like playing three of a card and hoping that I get like that particular card. And sometimes it's better to have more variants in like an open format. We kind of may not know what matchup you're going to go into. Even at the top tables, there are so many decks that like literally at the regional like generator Manadium generator got top four. That's not a matchup that that anyone's used to. You, you're going to sit there and you're going to read their cards, right? So you want to have a little more variance. You want to have a little more cards that like help you play into more matchups rather than focusing on like maxing out on like a single matchup. I'm pretty happy with these ratios so far. Um, really, most times I lost was due to my misplays and not really due to the list. So I'm not going to change much about it going for uh, going forward. As I did say, I might put in a reinforce into the side, but we'll see. And there's like just three more cards that you guys don't know yet. It's Impulse, Fire Attacker and Judgment. Judgment's kind of self-explanatory. I used to play more copies, but um, there was one time where Manadium actually broke the Terahertz combo board plus Solemn because I negated the activation of their Calarium and they were able to activate another one. And I was just unexperienced in the Manadium matchup at locals. So it just like completely washed me. It was like I could have survived and played into turn three, but because I s sacrificed half my life points, he just OTK'd me right like then and there. So I'm a little more careful about judgment now. It's like, okay, if I see it, I see it. If I don't, I don't. Impulse and the fire attacker. I like to sign the third impulse against like shifter dot decks and fire attacker because I wanted to have a card for control matchups. And there's there's actually been times, right? Like I was talking about Unchained earlier with uh, fire engine. Fire engine kind of sucks against Unchained because you're giving them that monster to, to like play with. Fire attacker is great against Unchained because once they search with Yama, you can just tribute impulse some of this. And then now you get to go plus against Flaunderies, right? Fire Engine's worthless. So I want to have Fire Attacker for that against Kashjira. Let's say they summon Fenrir or summon Unicorn and then they attempt to search. Like I'm still tripping Impulse Summoning Fire Attacker. I don't care if Fire Attacker gets banished at that point because, because it'll already be triggered by the time that Fenrir banishes it. So I'll still get the plus, right? So basically I'm, dro I'm dropping Impulse to dig like three cards deeper into my deck against control matchups to like dig for more cards that can help me 
play around the board. Fire attack is pretty cool. I don't think I'm going to cut it from side. I may cut the third impulse. It, it comes up, but it doesn't always come up. Like, I, I've been pretty happy with two. Um, I might cut the third impulse for the reinforce. So we'll see. I might also cut the Herald of the Abyss because that's never come up either. So those might be the two most cuttable cards from the side deck. Maybe nib down to two because I don't feel like I need it at three. Last card being Red Resonator, which you guys already knew. And it's like going to locals sometimes. It's like I can... I can say, like, without a doubt, like, if you're on Rescue Ace and Locals, you're probably, you probably have the best deck in the room. And I'm very well aware that this deck is going to get touched on the next ban list, at the very least. I know it's, like, either Turbulence, Emergency, Airlifter, one of those cards is going to get touched, and I really don't mind. I think I'd, I'd still play this deck through a ban list, assuming it's not, like, super heavy, where they just slaughter it completely. But otherwise, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with um how Rescue Ace has turned out, and it's a really fun deck to pilot. Like, honestly, it's, like, it's kind of mean, and so it has made me consider, like, maybe I should play a different deck sometimes, but there are other times where I'm like, oh, you know, my opponent generally outplayed me. Like, I need to practice more. I need to learn more about the deck, and it's not like you're going to auto-win because you're on Rescue Ace. Like, you really have to know what you're doing. And there are times where I was playing too fast and I like misplay. Like most of my losses were to were due to misplays. Not all of them, right? Like there are there are times at the regionals, like one Lambert loss was because of a misplay. The other one was I generally got outplayed like two games, and that was like the first round of the event. So like I was a little discouraged, but like I got I got I got a few wins and then I was feeling good, then I lost it pearly. And uh I could have gotten an invite if I didn't lose that third time. But once I lost the third time, I was like, damn, that was it. It's kind of like a bittersweet moment, like seeing seeing yourself misplay and then realizing it in real time. Like, holy shit, that was like the dumbest thing that like you could ever do. But like, don't, you know, let that discourage you and stuff like get back on the horse. Try again. So I'm, I'm seeing some stuff about like rescue base control and I'm seeing like people on like the charmers. I'm seeing people on like Celine. I, I do like think that if you're not on the co-talker package, Maybe then double SP will be necessary. The Charmers, uh, Hita, and Dark is necessary. Um, I can't say much about another good card for going second might be like Relinquished Anima. Um, I might I might consider this card um, in case I don't feel like going for the Terra Hertz play because like for, for going second, this is actually really, really good. A lot of the time the opponent just plays like right into this. So I'm really considering Anima for, for a minute. Um, Sunlight Wolf I've taken out because it's just like really hard to like make this card work unless you're on, uh, Salmangri Amirage. And that really only works if you like, and Amirage doesn't always work actually. Like Amirage only works if you open Hydrant only, right? If you normal summon Hydrant, that's when Amirage works. So it's like, I don't want to have a card like that fringe. Uh, Sunlight Wolf isn't great if you special summon your Hydrant compared to normal summon it. And I I just like, just don't summon this enough. Like there there aren't enough games where I summon Sunlight Wolf that, that, that I think is worth like a slot in like extra. Dark I could see being a good card because now that everyone's on SP, like you can dark back their SP or... You, you know, to go into like Axis Code or something, or, or to go into Celine, you can dark something back, go into Celine, go into Axis Code. So it, it's like you definitely have options for like your extra, but I really like the way that my extra was. The only thing I think that's cuttable is maybe Heat Soul. Like if I could find another end piece that's better, like maybe ending on uh, on a SP sometimes is better than Heat Soul, but it's not like 100% cuttable. I, I still think it's like utility with terahertz makes it worth the slot. It's not the end of the world if you go Sunlight Wolf and then go into SP. It's really personal preference. I think uh, SP could work as well. I mean, Sunlight Wolf into SP could could be a little better than Heat Soul as a card, and it is still a Fire Cybers, so maybe that could work. Like now, now I'm like I'm actually starting to think about it. Like maybe that might be better, like Sunlight Wolf with the SP. So I'll, I'll do a little testing with that. But otherwise, that's that's been about all for this deck profile. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Shout out to Chainlink for this sick ass field center. It's like a metal field center. It has like, you know, Dia Bellstar and uh, Hydrant on the front. And she's like wearing like a little more fighter fire-esque clothing. Yeah, the metallic texture is pretty nice. And the design, it's like, she's like using the hose from Hydrant. That's pretty cool, pretty cool idea. And then the little crest on the back. You know, you got the chain link logo at the bottom. You got like the rescue a symbol, I guess, on top. And then, you know, it being like a fire, fire uh, crest. It's pretty cool. And I also have these sleeves, 
which were also from Chainlink. I'll leave a link in the description. You can still get the field center, but you can't get these sleeves anymore. I only got 15 sleeves from like ordering. I thought it would have been like enough for like a whole deck, but um, they only gave enough for like an extra deck, which I kind of understand because printing custom sleeves can be pretty expensive. So I understand why it wasn't like a full set of 60. 